Hi, John Mortensen, owner and operator of PetDoorStore.com, and today I'm going to show you the best uh, panel pet door insert for a sliding glass door, and this is it. This is the Thermal Panel 3E, and actually this video works quite well for the Quick Panel 3 also. They're both made by the same manufacturer, Patio Pacific, and they are identical from top to bottom. The only difference between the two is this Thermal Panel has dual pane low E glass in it, and the quick panel has single pane uh, regular glass in it. Other than that, they're identical. So what makes it so good? Uh, well, it is the easiest to install panel that you can buy. It is the most weather tight panel that you can buy. And it's also the most durable flap that you can buy. So it really has everything going for it. Now this one here is bronze. This bronze, you might think bronze metal. No, it's like oil rub statue bronze. It's basically black. Um, this is an anodized coating. The other ones that you can get are, uh, you can get a clear anodized, which is like the bottom of a Coke can, just brushed aluminum look. And then there is a white. Now the white has a uh, baked enamel finish, so uh, it's really tough, uh, and it's white paint. Now that white is bright white. It's not eggshell, it's not, you know, cream color, it's bright white. Okay. So, what makes this thing so easy to install? Well, if you've seen my other video on, um, installing spring-loaded sliding glass pet doors. All of that applies to this, and this is just marginally easier than the other spring-loaded pet doors, and I'll get to that in a second. But these things are just really simple. They have a spring-loaded top, and you spring them in place. Once they're in there, you lock these two knobs down, and that prevents it from being uh, you know, compressed and twisted out from the outside. In fact, why don't I just set it in there real quick just to show you how easy it is. There you go. Lock the knobs down, uh, peel and stick some weather stripping, get everything situated the right way, adjust the wheels in the sliding glass door if need be, and, and you're done. I mean, it's literally the video on how to install one of these things takes maybe, I think, like 10 or 12 minutes, and the actual installation after you watch the video will take you about four. <laughs> so they're, they're very, very easy to put in. Uh, let's back out of here. Spring-loaded top, locks it down, the knobs lock it down. That's also your, your source of security. Once it's in here, it's up inside the track and it's plugged into the wall and it's sitting on the track down at the bottom. So if you can't slide the sliding glass door away from the pet door, you can't get the pet door out. I mean, it's trapped on the other three sides. So um, what they give you to lock the door is this. And if I had one gripe about the thermal panel, this is it. I'll hold it up a little closer so you can see. This uh, little lock just kind of uh, sets on the uh, on the edge of the track there, and then you twist it to uh, to tighten it up against the uh, against the track, and that's what prevents the door from moving. Now that works fine. I mean, security-wise, this is great, and it's pretty universal. And really, the reason that I think that they did this particular lock is because they wanted to be a completely tools-free installation, and it is. I mean, the only tool that you need really. Is a pair of scissors. And I, I mean, most people don't think of <laughs> scissors as a tool, but I suppose it is. Um, but that's it. Uh, the rest of it is just uh, you know peel and stick and, and and clamp this thing on. Now, if you don't, if this is fine, like I said, if you just want to lock the door. But if you use this door a lot, you don't want to get down and undo the lock, open up the door, close it, lock it up again, and, and do that over and over again. So, uh, a really popular upsell on these thermal panels is our Charlie bar, which is basically the broom behind the uh, broomstick behind the door method of locking. But the difference between a Charlie bar and a regular broomstick is Charlie bar comes with mounts and you can set those mounts at four feet off the ground or wherever it's comfortable for you. And that way you're not having to, you know, to bend over to pull the stick out of the bottom of the bottom track there. So, um, yeah, lock. All right. Down below the flap, or below the window, above the flap, you might see that there's kind of a little, couple little spacers in here. And those are not just dead weight. They're actually there for a reason. Um, they could have made glass go all the way down, but they decided to do it this way. There's a very good reason for it. 
this, the distance from the floor to the bottom of the flap is called the rise, and the thermal panel has an adjustable rise. So after you get this, it's always going to come with the lowest rise, which is three inches. But after you get this, you can disassemble the bottom and you can switch things around and you can put the pet door in first and then put the, the spacers underneath or arrange them in whatever uh, fashion you like to get the rise that you want. Now, basically your choices go like this. On a small, you can do a three inch or a five inch rise. Medium, three, five, or seven inch rise. Large, this one, three, five, seven, or nine inch rise. And then an extra large, three, five, seven, nine, or 11 inch rise. Now, if you have this particular door, this large door, and you have an English Bulldog or something that's really low to the ground, you're going to want it down here at the three inch rise. Uh, alternative, alternatively, if you had it as high as it can go at the, at the nine inch rise, you can fit a, a 28 inch tall dog. Now that's measured to the top of their back at the front shoulder. Uh, you can fit a dog that's that tall. That's going to be like a Greyhound, a Weimaraner, a really tall German Shepherd. And they'll all fit through this door um, with, with the pet door moved up in the frame. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little time a little later and I'll actually show you how the, the bottom disassembles and you can slide everything out and slide it back in. I'll change it up maybe one to like a five inch rise, which would be the right size for most Labradors. Uh, that's pretty much, uh, I think, the most common use for this door. The real story about this door, though, is the flap at the bottom. Now this flap is called the Endura flap, and uh, it's, it's pretty unique. The flap itself is actually about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm not sure if that's the thickness is going to translate on, on the video there. It's flexible, and it has these kind of uh, bellows on the sides of the flap. Then at the bottom, there's a little bar that jumps up and down, So, and it, and it swings on the top on a hinge. So most flaps on most pet doors are vinyl and they just simply flex both ways to open in each direction. Uh, last year, it's the end of 2014 now, last year we had the polar vortex in 2013. I'm sure you remember that. Well, when that was going on, we had a ton of calls for people who had flaps that were doing two things. One, they were shrinking, so the flap would shrink in the cold, and then they'd have people would call and they'd say, I've got a big gap around the edges of the, of the flap on the three sides in cold air, minus 40 degree air is blowing into my house. The other one is, um, it got so cold that the vinyl in the flap froze completely solid. My dog hit it at a run and it snapped the flap right off. And I sold hundreds of flaps last year for that reason. Not a single Endura flap though. Uh, because this one, uh, it pivots on a hinge, so it doesn't have to flex to open, so it doesn't matter how cold it gets. As far as the shrinkage goes, yeah, okay, it shrinks, but those, those uh, bellows on the sides just stretch out a little bit more, and, and the magnets still hold it shut. Same thing with the bottom. It can't shrink so much that the bottom can't come up enough to, uh, to make up the difference. So it doesn't really matter how cold it gets, this doesn't suffer from those problems that the other one does. Um, it does also come with this locking cover. Uh, this cover has a little spring-loaded pin so that uh, a thief or your dog can't uh, lift it up from the outside. And uh, it works really well. This is a, a, a thicker plastic cover. Seems like people want a, um, a sheet metal cover for some reason. But, uh, you know, if, if it were my choice, I'd rather have this. I think this is going to be tougher to kick out than a, than a real thin sheet metal cover would be, which is what you'd likely get. Uh, adjustment ranges. This one has three what they call standard adjustment ranges. There's a standard undersize, uh, which goes from 74 and three quarters up to 77 and three quarters. Then there's the, the regular size, which is this one here. This goes 77 and one quarter up to 80 and one quarter. And then there is a, a standard oversize for eight foot sliding glass doors. That one goes from 93 and a quarter to 96 and a quarter. Now, if you should have something that's in between those ranges, maybe you have like a seven foot door, which is an oddball, but we've seen it enough times to know that they're out there, an 84 inch door, or maybe you have a six foot door. Um, in, a, in a mobile home, we've seen that on occasion. Uh, we can custom build this one to fit. Also, if you're just outside of the ranges that are listed, we got something else for you. 
let me see, hopefully this will work. You can see this. If you look at the edge of this door where it goes up and down, the cross section is like an H. So if you got your, your, your thermal panel in and you bought this 77 and a quarter up to 80 and a quarter and your door was 77, so it just wouldn't compress quite far enough down to, to get into the track, what you could do is cut it off and you can cut it down to the crossbar of the H. That gives you about an inch um, and that's enough to, to, to get it in. Functionally, you know, it reduces it to like a 76 and a quarter up to 79 and a quarter. In addition, there's another thing that we can do. This is a three quarter inch height extension and this is actually made from the same thing that they make the little spacers with. So it's basically a piece of the pet door framing and it will set right in top right on top in this groove up top here and it just gives you another inch. Let me turn it the other way so you can see it up there. It sticks out, it's a three quarter inch height extension, so call it three quarters. It looks like maybe a little bit more than that, but, but that's, um, that's how that works. Now this thing is, you know, it's, it's plugged in on the bottom and it also plugs into the top where you, where you stick it into the, to the sliding glass door frame. So it's very secure in there. And, uh, and you don't have to worry about it falling out and that sort of thing. I got a white one here, uh, but it comes in bronze, so I could have got the matching one. I just wanted you to see how far it sticks up. So, um, so yeah, high extension is a, kind of a handy thing. Um, we can also do these real short for, um, for just a sideways sliding window. Um, so if you, if you have a, a short window that might be four feet tall or something like that, and you want a pet door for that, uh, we can custom build these for that uh, purpose as well. Comes with foam weather stripping. Again, if you've seen the uh, the installation video, this probably looks familiar. The cheap door that I did the video with only had enough weather stripping for one side. This one, being the higher end model, has enough for both sides of the uh, of the sliding glass door. So you'll have it up against the wall and where the sliding glass door closes up to it. And it comes with a draft stopper. So. When your door is closed, there's kind of a little felt weather strip right down the middle here, and that seals the two frames together. With the pet door, uh, or with the sliding glass door open to install the pet door, you have a hole here, and there's a big hole where the, where the air can get right between the two panes of glass. That might be, you know, an inch wide and, uh, and basically <laughs> floor to ceiling, so that's a, that's a really big hole. For that one, you're going to use this piece of weather stripping here. Now, this is a uh, they call it a draft stopper. It's a soft piece and um, it just has peel and stick tape on the one side. So what you do is you just uh, just peel and stick it on the back of the sliding glass door facing out or you can go to the outside and put it on the stationary window facing in. Um, but it's just supposed to, you don't actually want to clean the window with this. You just want it to barely touch the, uh, the glass on the other side to keep the air from blowing through. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to adjust the rise, and then I'm also going to show you the other option for this one, which is called a draft stopper. Or, I'm sorry, a bug warden. The bug warden allows you to use a sliding screen door with the pet door installed. That's another cool feature. Oh, um, another thing on the custom stuff. They, they do also have a, um, a frosted glass option, so that the glass is opaque. You can't see through it. Uh, the, the frosted glass option is twenty to thirty dollars, I think, depending on the size. Uh, adds about three weeks to the uh, delivery time. The custom height options, uh, if you get one made to fit your door, is uh, is about four to five weeks added delivery time. So those things do add a little bit of time, but it's nice to have the options for those. And if you're just outside of the of the regular range, get one of these and save the money <laughs> and the time. All right, I'm going to change around set it up for the uh, for the rise thing and then uh, pick it up okay so I'm going to show you how to adjust the rise now for expediency sake I've used my cordless drill here and I've taken out the screws there's two screws at the bottom uh, which hold the frame together and then there's two directly underneath the glass which the manufacturer recommends uh, that you loosen them up but don't pull them out so I've done that and now that I've got that done, the pet door slides straight out of the bottom of the frame. And actually, I might peek 
good time, you can see that there's a notch in the bottom of this, and that's what sits on the uh, rail in your sliding glass storage rack. Anyway, this bottom piece pulls off, and then you've got your spacer. So, let's say, for instance, that I want a 5-inch rise for the lab, like I was talking about. So I'm just pull one of these spacers off. Actually, let's do two. What we'll do... It seems to me that it's easier to put this top piece onto the pet door now and then slide this unit all into the uh, frame. Slide this in. These all kind of plug together. Wiggle and push and it'll pop into place. And then take this one here. this way and then take the last piece there, go. there you have a five inch rise now so you just put the screws back in on the bottom tighten everything up and you're good to go